24. Let's get ready to close in Matthew 24. And brothers and sisters, look, this is the church. We're told the majority will forsake us. When this center law test passes, I'm going to pass to this. We'll come back to this. Inspiration tells us, brothers and sisters, that the sovereign scenes which prophecy has left revealed should not be left what? Untouched. Somebody has to talk about the prophecies. We're going to find out that in these prophecies that God wants to wake us up. That somebody has to get back to the sanctuary. The sanctuary has made us who we are. The reason why we're acting like cows and chickens is because we have forgotten who we are. And if you want to get your senses back, you've got to get back into the sanctuary. It is the loss of the sanctuary message that has given us spiritual amnesia. When we get back to the sanctuary, that which made us a people will remake us a people. It was January 14 that brought us into existence. It's going to be the same message that brings us back into existence. The Bible says, Thy way, O God, is in the what? Sanctuary. And you can't understand the prophecies until you get into the sanctuary. And there it all connects in one man whose name is Jesus. Who's in the most holy place? Jesus. Now my brothers and sisters, as Rachel says, let, it says, in fact, we're not going to close in Matthew 24. Let's close in Romans 13. We won't go to Matthew tonight. Let's close in Romans 13. Let's go to the Heavenly Father as we get ready to bring this message to a close. Show us that our greatest need is to wake up. That we must be about our Father's business, Lord. We cannot pray if we're not awake. Please help us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen to me. Do you know that there's no use trying to pray if we're not awake? You know that Jesus did not say pray and watch. He said what? Watch and pray. Do you know that the first thing, always first, what happens in the morning if you pray before you wake up? You're dreaming. It's not praying. You study the life of Christ. In the book of Mark chapter 1, the life of Christ says that he rose a great while before day. And his custom was that after he woke up, then he did what? Pray. And do you know, brothers and sisters, that sleeping people, we have told in early life, 65, that when they pray, sleeping children, when they pray, they do not pray to Christ in the most holy place, but they pray to Satan. And he breathes his spirit upon them. Can you imagine? You kneel down to pray, and you're praying, but because you're still spiritually asleep, that the devil Breathes his spirit upon you. I don't know about you, but I don't want Jesus. What are you saying? Yeah. You know, it starts tonight. Tonight, you say, Lord, wake me up. Make me serious about this. And it starts tonight. Romans 13. You there, amen? Yeah. It said, Let them the solemn scene of the reveal, but let them touch. If our people were half awake, they realize the nearness of the events portrayed in the revelations. Romans 13, verse 11 says, Let's read it together. Romans 13, verse 11. What does the Bible say? The Bible says, And that what? I didn't hear the rest of you. Let's all read together. Let's, let's sound like a chorus. Amen. Romans 13, 11, it says, And that what? Praise God. You sound good. And that knowing the time, that now it is what? High time to awake where? Out of sleep. Why? For now is our salvation nearer than when we. Now let us say first, believe. We have it in the Amen. Than when we believe. Now, my brothers and sisters, the reason why we're going to show us this week, if ever there was a time to wake up, the time is now. The Bible says that if we don't know the time, we'll never wake up. But knowing the time, we wake up. And then we turn our eyes upon Jesus. It says, let Daniel speak, let Revelation speak, and tell what is true. But whatever phase of the subject is presented, I don't care where we study, uplift who? Jesus. Do you like that name? You know, when we see how much of a crisis we're in, we're going to find that the only hope in the crisis is to have Christ. Christ in us is the hope of glory. We'll come back to this. We'll come back to this. We'll come back to this. I'm going to show you this, brothers and sisters. Watch this now. You know what this man is right here? Watch this. You know the Pope of Rome is? Pope Francis. You know who that is? If you don't, you better know who he is very soon. The man who went over the world in five minutes. This is 2014. This is the present Pope. We're going to study this week. What does that say to the century? What does that say? 
to do with you? What does it have to do with me? What does it have to do with waking up? I am telling you, brothers and sisters, we've never seen like we've seen right now. This Pope of Rome, we're going to show you that everything the Bible says the Pope will do has been done already. Then America is coming around the sin. They go to Jordan, as the Bible says. Now, my brothers and sisters, do you understand that this Pope of Rome is coming to America next year? What's going on next year for the church? The general conference session. Next year. Do you know that this issue of women's ordination, do you know that this is prophetic? We're going to study this week. We're going to show you from the scriptures that this reason says this will be the last condition of the church. Women's ordination before the passing of a national Sunday law. And not one of us in this room is right. I think it's time to wake up, brothers and sisters. We need Jesus like never before. Yes. And what a blessing it is to be at a prayer retreat yes. where nothing else is more important than shedding the world out and shedding Jesus in. What do you say? Yes. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we have not even touched the surface of why that you are reviving and reforming seven Adventists now for the objective of finishing the work in this final generation. The destiny of the universe is at stake. The destiny of the church is at stake. And Lord, we're not ready. We're sleeping. We give more time and energy to our job to our pleasure, to our play. In video games, we can play for hours on children. As adults, we can work for hours and play for hours. But Lord, how few of the moments that are dedicated to prayer, we so easily fall asleep when it's time to be awake. But Lord, we're thankful that you're so merciful. That even though we've made so many mistakes, that because of Jesus and the cross and in the most holy place, that you will awaken us, just like you did to Peter, James, and John, repeatedly, so that we can wake up before it is too late. Lord, your early church didn't get it ready before that first crisis. And not one of them were ready. They all forsook you when that crisis broke and gave sin to me. But Lord, if we're not ready now, we will not have a second chance such as they. May we wake up, Lord. And we cannot do this by ourselves. I pause the prayer at the very beginning of this prayer retreat. If you say, Lord, I want this experience to be something that I've never had before. As an individual, as a family, just raise your hand. You want Jesus to do something special for you. Praise God. I'm raising my hand not because I'm just a presenter. I want Jesus to do something for me and for my family. That we can say as Joshua, just before they enter the promised land, in heaven, in time, as for me and my house. Heavenly Father, you said, lift a hand. Grant us the Spirit. Make our hearts song. Be with every minister. Be with every member. Be with every person here. Be with the grounds. Be with the organizers. Do something so that there's a revival and a reformation that we can go to our respective places to finish the work. Wake us up, Lord. We thank you for what you've done even tonight. For we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.